but the magic, I brought that up. So let's begin. Those are the symbols I told you about. A five, yeah, last year was a five year, a pentacle. Magically, the number five in its symbol represents freedom, mental dexterity, and, can, and communication. Five is also a symbol of fruitfulness and new learning. So we had a five year. So you could ask yourself, you know, amongst all the turmoil, what uh, did you experience that represented freedom for you? Where did you have to have mental dexterity <laughs> and uh, communication? It could be within your heart and your head or other people, you name it. So we are in a sixth year represented by um, a symbol stolen by um, a, a tribe to represent their flag. As an ancient symbol for Anahata, the heart chakra. And it's very powerful because of the perfect balance of yin and yang. And it generates an energy that becomes life-giving. So the masculine and the feminine and the divine um, union is essentially the same thing. It's a vehicle for transformation, which is why it's perverted on the planet. God forbid you know that. Yeah, that's right. The evil God is a poser. <laughs> God forbid you know that that symbol is sacred. Just like I said before, the swastika. These are generators of energy and protection. Um, I'm going to go into the swastika next time. Right now, we're just going to talk about those two things right now. The pentacle and the octahedron, a.k.a. the two-dimensional. I'm looking for my octahedron. I don't have it here, but we're going to locate it. So anyway, you know what I'm talking about, those two symbols. The pentacle, which is a five star, and then the octahedron is the three-dimensional shape for Solomon's seal, the star. It has all these different names, interestingly enough. And then it was called Star of David, and now it's I think it's given to... Uh, a certain tribe. But that's a, an ancient symbol that was stolen. So the pentacle was perverted. So we can't use it for magically the number five represents freedom, mental dexterity, and communication. It's a symbol of fruitfulness and new learning. So if I were a dark magician on the planet, I would want people to think that the star was bad. And, and it represented um, the devil or something. And then they wouldn't use it. But none, nevertheless, it's still a frequency of five. Everyone experiences the magic. But if you actually are aware of the frequency, because everything is energy, frequency, and light, then uh, you would be able to um, ride the wave. I, you know, make it, make it work for you. So... You can look back at 2021 and decide for yourself what kind of year you had. But going forward, six symbolizes beauty. Get ready. This is what you could have mm. magically. I'm going to go straight to that. Mm, mm, mm. Well, it's the symbol that represents love, wisdom, and responsibility. But I say it is a symbol of the perfect masculine and feminine in union. And then it creates an energy. And then it evolves into the octahedron. And then it does all kinds of wonderful things. <laughs> Which is why they made sex bad and perverted. So you see all those energies available to us. And we should embrace it. And that's all for now. I'm excited that I have a office space that I am organizing to help my thoughts become con con congealed and that way I can go forward with teaching my audience um, how to well basically introducing um, symbols and things that you can use in your art uh, you can use it in your personal studies 
You can use it in meditation. Like, what do these symbols mean? And then your own research. Uh, you can do mental things, like mentally, certainly. And then how it's drawn. Like, why it's upside down and it's considered the devil and all that. And um, see why that, if you, were, if you wanted to, to create mind control on the planet, how would you do that? Would you do it with symbols that people used since antiquity and then change the meaning so that they don't embrace those symbols because they might be afraid of them or they think they're witchcraft or dark magic? Yeah, I mean, that would be a genius move. <laughs> so um, this book right here is a good one. And there's the ISBN. I'm not looking for a... Um, Commission, I'm just spreading the love. And it's called The Power of Positive Witchcraft. So if you're afraid of witchcraft and you think it's bad, you have to look at where your programming came from. You have to think about it. You have to think, why would those that are doing black magic on the planet, why would they want to make you fear your own power and fear those that follow the energetics? I mean, what makes them burn the witches at the stake. And it's their own witches, their own internal witches. Like, which is the reality? <laughs> which reality are you living? So I am living a pretty darn good one. One of my missions in life is to find um, taper candles. Yeah, and I found a magazine, but I don't want these to not fit in it, you know? It's like, there's nothing worse than getting uh, a taper holder that your candle doesn't fit in and I don't want to have to do all of that messy melt the bottom and stick it in and hold it <laughs> has anybody else done that yeah I, I want to take these shopping with me to Goodwill or online but Goodwill first start local and it'd be an adventure so it'll, it'll, put, it'll give me a, a way to go out and spread the, my beacon of light is to go look for things that are unique in places that are unique. You know, just like go out into the world. That's why it's important to just be. Like, you don't have to have an agenda. You don't have to go have lunch anywhere fancy uh, or anything like that. You can simply, hey, go, I'm going to go on an adventure. I'm going to find a taper holder. <laughs> I'm going to start at Goodwill, and I'm going to go to Craftsman Shop. I'm going to bring my candle with me because I've got a bunch of these and these are all um, sustainably made palm oil tapers that I'm not selling, but I got them from Good Light. So if that's where you want to get some, I'm not getting a commission. That's just where I get mine and I really like how they burn because they burn cleanly. Like you, they don't leave any wax, which is why these are impossible to like melt down, there just there's no wax and you end up charring the bottom. I mean, you could get those waxy things that you put down and stick to it, but you know, I'm making it my mission to find a taper candle holder. <laughs> okay. Um, I will get serious one of these days and take notes. I haven't done that. Um, so right now these are all introductory conversational um, co uh, Kickstarters about what my course tar course content's going to be, and I haven't figured out how I'm going to manifest it. So I'm going to I'm giving assignments, which is I tell you uh, what I'm going to put it into the course manual. It's going to be free, or it's going to be by donation for cert for certain, but it's going to be um, like history of the pentacle. And you, it's going to be self-reflective, so it will be like a manual. So you get to actually be like, you know, what does that pentacle mean to you? Uh, because, you know, you see a lot of homes that have a five-star um, right side up, the right side up. Uh, you have that on the side of their homes. And I've noticed that in um, the uh, south. But I haven't lived in North Carolina, excuse me. I haven't lived in, in my hometown of New Hampshire. Um, so I don't know if they still do it up there or ever have. But it, it's a symbol of freedom, mental dexterity, and communications. 
fruitfulness and new learning. So I would think that's a good luck charm. So why wouldn't you put that on the side of your house? It's a protection against evil influences. <laughs> there you have it, folks. All right, more later, I'll check in, talk to you about the swastika and how it's rooted in the runes. And it's amazing what you find. Talk to you later.